engineering is just saying, I've got a problem and I've got all these techniques and tools in my head. We're gonna solve this problem together. Engineering is, is making solutions for people. I grew up in Brookline, Massachusetts, which is right outside of Boston. When I was a young girl, actually one of my favorite memories is I would watch Mr. Wizard's World with my dad. But it was awesome. There was, you know, building your own record player. There's the needle in the amplifier. Oh, wow. At the time, it was totally okay to set up explosives as long as you called the fire department ahead of time. Whoa! I just loved being creative and I loved science. I loved building things, like taking things apart, understanding how they worked. I was actually having just a lot of fun because I'd been gaining all these skills in building and microcontrollers and LEDs and art and technology. And I'd post these products online and send them to people and say, hey, here's a cool project I built. In Boston, Cambridge, and MIT, there is a strong open source culture. I was just soaking in this idea of if you are creating new technology, new capabilities, you have to give it away. Otherwise, you're, you're kind of being selfish. So I took that approach, which is called open source software, and applied it to the projects I was building to make open source hardware. I'd post up these projects and I'd get a lot of emails that said, hey, you know, this project is really cool. I want to learn how to build this too, but I have to buy all these parts. Can you just sell me a kit? You know, something that's an all-in-one box, and when I open it, all the parts are in it, and then I'll be able to follow along. I was living in a condemned apartment, um, but eventually that actually got torn down and then we ran out of space and so we got another apartment in the same building and we would shuffle storage back and forth. I was taught engineering, but you don't really know how to run a business, how to manage people, how to create a community. I think having started it when I was 25, I just had to prove everyone wrong and I was just like, I know I can do better than everyone and I'll show you. It's me, Lady Ada, and this is our Internet of Things box. Electronics engineering for me is, is my art form. What I'm trying to do is inspire people to become curious and practice using technology, learn electronics, so I can build that thing that is in my heart and make it real. At Adafruit, we share everything. I share all the plans, the schematics, the design, the files, the code. It's all online, and every week, we do show and tell. It's a live video, like hangout. Anyone with a webcam can show off what they're building. So we have people who are doing uh, cosplay. We have people who are sewing. We have people who are um, mixing like clay and metal and glass with electronics to build sculptures. When somebody who glass blows shows, hey, I embedded the electronics in the glass sculpture so it lights up, I'm inspired. I'm like, hmm, that's a good idea. What kind of technology would help you achieve your goal? And then we publish that online for free. And that can inspire the next engineer in waiting. The traditional image of engineer is being changed. Right now, the people who are building electronics in my community, they're not what people would traditionally look at as an engineer, and that's good. That means that we're getting more brains, more experience, more people that have new, exciting problems to solve. The most heartfelt moment I've had running Adafruit is we got an email from a parent, and he'd been watching the show in town with his young daughter. The daughter turned to him and said, wow, this is so cool. Can boys be engineers too? And I was really inspiring, because it's like, one down. Yeah. <laughs>